So let's start with you, uh, Chip. And uh, you're talking, uh, looking inside the mail, page 16, but lots of the papers covering it. This huge change in German foreign policy and, crucially, its defence spending. Yeah, it's an incredible about turn because the Germans have always taken the position that there's the futility of force rather than the utility of force. And the fact that um, Chancellor Olaf Scholz got a standing ovation, uh, ovation yesterday for announcing a $100 million uh, uh, uplift and the fact that they're actually giving 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger missiles, which are anti-aircraft missiles, is a profound shift. But has there not been traditionally a cap on what they can spend with their armed forces and, um, and, the, and the amount of, of, of pieces of equipment they can have since Second World War? No, no it's only a politically imposed cap. Oh. They've always taken the view that multilateralism and dialogue is the way forward and that the Cold War ended by engagement, not by economic strength. Mm -hmm. That has been ripped off in the last uh, week and that's why they've gone to the position they have. Well, not only have they changed positions, they've now gone to the, the highest spender in the whole of Europe on, on defences. So they've gone from being I mean, nowhere to the top of the league table overnight. It all, all depends on what your GDP is. Yeah, so yeah. 2% of GDP, if you've got a higher, a yeah. bigger economy, is still 2%. I think what's the really interesting thing is that two of the parties in the German government, of course, are the Free Alliance and the Greens. They, um, they emphasise values and human rights. Both of those have been ripped up by Putin as well, which is why the standing ovation for the Chancellor occurred in, in the Parliament.